In this presentation, we're going to show you how to solve problems with multiple objects interacting with each other. Before we can actually show you how to do this, we need to remind you of Newton's third law. Newton's third law says that for every force on an object, there's always another force on a different object that is equal in size but opposite in direction. For example, when this little tiny tugboat pulls on this massive barge over here, okay, there's a force forward on the barge pulling the barge forward and there's going to be an equal force on the bar on the tugboat being pulled backwards. The two forces are always on two different objects and you can identify them because one will be for example force on barge by tugboat and the other one will be you just switch the two objects force on tugboat by barge. And you can always recognize your forces that way. Okay, here is a couple of tips or summarization of what I'm going to do in order to solve problems with multiple objects. Make sure we always draw a free body diagram for each object involved. We're going to identify the third law forces, or in other words, forces that are paired that are always equal and opposite um, in, the, in the problem. And then we're going to identify a good coordinate system that works for both objects. Uh, this can be a little tricky sometimes. Uh, we're also going to try and remember that when objects are tied together, they have the same acceleration. Uh, right, you can't go faster, the thing in front can't go, fa the tugboat, for example, can't go faster than the barge, and the barge can't go faster than the tugboat if they're tied together. Uh, also, we need to look at all objects as if they're one system when we're solving for acceleration. I'll show you how, what that means. And also, when you're looking for the force in between two objects, you have to look at an individual object by itself. So this is what we're going to do. Let's do it. Okay, so here's a good problem. This is two objects tied together by a rope and the front object is being pulled forward with an 8 Newton force. This is very similar to the idea of the tugboat problem, as if this is the tugboat and this is the giant barge. Uh, first thing we're going to do, oh, and they want us to find the acceleration of the smaller block and the tension in the rope. First thing we're going to do, of course, is draw our two free body diagrams. This is a typical thing that most people do when they draw um, free body diagrams. They'll get, uh, for the second mass, they'll get the normal force and the weight, and they say the pull force of 8 newtons forward, and then they'll say for this guy, right, the rope is pulling it forward, and normal force and weight. Uh, but we're actually missing a force here. A lot of people think that this is 8 newtons, and then therefore this is also 8 newtons, and they're both being pulled forward with 8 newtons. This is incorrect. Remember, Newton's third law, if you if uh, one object pushes on one or pulls on one, the other object will respond and pull back or push back. So a rope, if we think of it as massless, will only simply be a method of pulling from a distance. or uh, So that way, it's kind of like the blocks are just pulling directly on each other. There's just a rope that's allowing it to pull from a short distance away. So if this, this tension force forward really is the coming from mass 2, so this is the force on block 1 by 2, then there will be a force on 2 by 1, okay? The rope is pulling this one forward. The rope is also attached to this block, pulling it backwards, though. So there has to be another force uh, pulling this guy back. And now we have two correct free body diagrams. This guy will have a net force going forward. This guy will have a net force going backwards. All right, now we have to identify the uh, Newton's third law pairs. So Force on one by two, force on two by one. Those are our third law pairs. These two are equal in size and opposite in direction. Now, another thing we could do qualitatively is I could ask a question like, how big should this, these forces be relative to the pull force? Well, I know that mass two is accelerating forward. Therefore, this force here has to be less than eight Newtons. Uh, so that would allow this to have a net force going to the right, and this would also have a net force going to the right, and they can both accelerate at the same rate. I want to establish my variables like we always do, so I list out my variables. I'm looking for acceleration first, and in order to do this, we're going to look at the objects as a system. Now, I could try and solve by looking at one object at a time, but the problem is, is I don't have enough information. I don't know this force if I look at this block, just this object, and I don't know this force if I just looked at this object. But when I look at both objects together, and the only reason I can do this is because they have the same acceleration since they're tied together. When I look at the two objects together as a whole system, it's like really this one eight, or sorry, and I find the net force on this whole system, 
the normal and weight still uh, cancel out because they're equal in size. These two, remember, are equal in size and opposite in direction, so then they cancel out. The thing that I didn't know just goes away. That leaves the only force acting or really pulling this whole system forward, the two blocks forward, is the 8 Newton force. So it's like an 8 Newton force is pulling two masses, or, or the, these two masses collectively together. So I'm going to look at this as a system, and this problem becomes much, much simpler. So, right, those two cancel, and those two cancel, I'm left with just the 8 Newton force. All right, so uh, we're going to write an equation in order to solve. Um, so the equation we're going to use is just F net equals MA, except in this case, right, we're looking at the whole system. F net equals MA is designed to work with one object at a time. However, it can also work at, on a system of objects. You just have to look at the net force of the system, which equals the mass of the entire system, times the acceleration of the entire system, which in this case is fine because the acceleration of both objects is the same. All right, so... The mass of the system will be the sum of the two masses. The net force will be, remember, these two canceled out, those two canceled out, and the two blue arrows canceled out. All I was left with is the 8 Newton force. So the 8 Newton force is the net force. The total mass is the two masses added together times my acceleration. I just divide and solve for my algebra, and I get 0.24 meters per second squared is my acceleration. Nice and easy when I look at everything as a system. Now in order to find the internal force, or this force inside the system that went away, this tension force between the two objects, when I look at the whole system, this method does not work to find an internal force. The reason is, is because they canceled out, right? They just disa excuse me, they just disappeared. So I can't solve for something that just disappears. So in this case, I can't look at it as a system. When I solve for an internal force, or force between two objects, I need to look at one of the two of the two objects. It doesn't matter which one, just one of them. So I could look at mass one or mass two. I'm going to solve by doing both and you'll see you get the same answer either way. Uh, okay, so I can do net force of just object one equals the mass of just object one times acceleration of just object one, right? Um, and I can uh, look at the net force as just the force on one by two. And uh, then I just plug things in. Now that I know acceleration, I can go ahead and solve for the force of 1 by 2. It is 3.12 newtons. Now, if I chose the other object, it doesn't matter. Okay, I would still do the net force, but this time the net force on 2 times the mass of 2, or equals the mass of 2 times the acceleration of 2. Now, the net force is a little bit slightly more complicated, right? Instead of just being one force, it's this force minus this force will be whatever's left over of the net force. So we get F pole minus F2 on 1. Uh, and then we plug in our numbers, do our algebra, and we solve, and we get the exact same number. So, to recap, we're, these are the things that we're going to do, right? We draw a free body diagram for each object when you have multiple objects. you got to identify your third law force. You've got to establish a good coordinate system. Now, I didn't need to really think about that this time. It was just really straightforward. It'll get complicated on the next one. And then we need to remember that tied objects together have the same acceleration. And we've got to look at objects, or when we solve for acceleration, we look at the whole system. And finally, when we solve for the forces in between two objects, you look at one object at a time. That's pretty much the trick. We're going to do one more problem to give another example. Here's a pulley problem, very typical for a lot of uh, uh, textbooks and, and uh, tests. Okay, so in this case, very similarly, we want to find the tension in the string between the two blocks, and we want to find the acceleration as well. I drew my two free body diagrams. Uh, we get tension up for both, and we got the weight down. Now, I know that the weight for this guy is a little bit smaller, so I drew him smaller, and I know the weight for this is bigger. I also know that, uh, you know, just looking at this, I can tell that this side should go up while this side goes down. So the tension force pulling this up better be smaller than, than the weight one, okay? So tension is a little bit shorter than weight one. Uh, so over here, though, it's this object's going to go up, so tension is bigger. So immediately, I can kind of guesstimate the size of tension. I know it's less than weight 1 and more than the weight 2. Okay, I know it's somewhere in between the, the weights of those two objects. That's what tension is going to have to be to allow mass 2 to go up and to allow mass 1 to go down. Now, when I talked about establishing a good coordinate system, this is where it gets a little tricky, and you'll see that here in just a second. But first, let's identify the third law pairs. Okay, 
So it's really this tension pulling up is really caused by the fact that mass 2 here is trying to go down. Okay, so we're going to, oh sorry, list my variables. And then we're going to establish, hey look, this is really the tension in between is really these two blocks, is blocks pulling on each other. We'll relabel these forces, right? This force here pulling mass 1 up is really the force on 1 by 2. And this force over here is really the force on 2 by 1. These are really third law pair forces if we assume the string is massless or really, really light. Okay, so now we establish our coordinate system. I know that this object will go up. So therefore, I'm going to say up is positive. That makes sense to me. Okay, and uh, here's the tricky part. If you say up is positive for him, then that means he's going down. It's weird to say he's going in the positive direction while he's going in the negative direction. We want to look at this as a whole system. And the reason is, is because if we think of this as up, uh, he's going positive and he's going negative, then they'll have different accelerations. And remember, these two objects that are tied together are supposed to have the same acceleration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a coordinate system for the system. So if this going up is positive, then that means this going down is also positive. So it's kind of like this way is positive and this way is negative, okay? So up for mass 2 is positive, down for mass 1 is positive. And now with this coordinate system, when we write an equation, it'll make more sense and we'll have positive accelerations for both objects. Now again, we want to solve for the acceleration, so in order to do so, we got to look at the whole system. So we're going to look at this whole system. I drew kind of a funky looking bubble thinking uh, just, just to remind me that, hey, this is going up and then coming down, right, because the pulley's up here. All right, so we say, okay, let's calculate uh, the amount of acceleration. Well, let's see here. If this is one force in the positive direction and this is another force in the negative direction, according to its coordinate system, these are equal and opposite forces. We're going to do the same thing we did last time where we do the net force of the whole system equals the mass of the whole system times acceleration of the whole system. Okay, so if these are in opposite directions, even though they look the same direction, it's kind of confusing. But this is positive, right? This is actually a negative direction. This goes up, this goes down, right? Then that means that it would be this force minus this force, and those two just cancel out, okay? And all I'm left with is really a battle between weight 2 and weight 1. Now, weight 1 is in the positive direction, so that's a positive force. Weight 2 is in the negative direction, that's a negative force. So really, the net force will be the difference between weight 1 and weight 2. Uh, or in other words, weight 1 minus weight 2 is equal to whatever net force you have on the system. It's a battle between those two forces, okay? And then the total mass is, of course, the sum of the masses equals acceleration. I plug in my numbers, and I can solve, do my algebra, and I get somewhere around 0.338 meters per second squared. Now that I know the rate that both objects are accelerating at, I can go ahead and try and find the tension in between. However, I'm going to show you one more way of solving for the acceleration, just because I know thinking about the different directions can get a little confusing. This next way is a little bit more appropriate and really does the exact same thing, but does all the steps in between. Okay? Um, this way that I'm showing you is really just a shortcut of what I'm about to show you. So really another way to solve this is to do the same thing that we just did, except instead what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the individual objects as well. And then we'll stick them together as a system. So we're going to look at uh, both objects individually is what we're going to do. And if I take a look at the net force on 1 equals the mass of 1 times acceleration 1, and I write an equation for that. I say, okay, well, weight 1 is positive. This is negative. So weight 1 minus tension, okay, is going to equal mass of 1 times acceleration of 1. And then I can set up the same equation for mass 2, except it's a little bit different, right? This way is positive. That way is negative. So the bigger force, tension, minus the smaller force, weight 2, will equal my net force in this case. So net force of 2 equals mass of 2 times acceleration of 2. This turns into the tension up minus the weight down, that is my net force on this second system, equals M2A. All right, now what I can do is I can simply combine these two equations to solve for the, uh, or to uh, be able to still solve for acceleration. 
If I didn't know acceleration and I didn't know the tension, I've got two unknowns, acceleration and tension. So an easy way to combine these two would be, and to get rid of tension, would be to use elimination and adding both equations together. I want to add them because this tension is negative, while this one's positive. So if I simply add both equations together, okay, that means I add this side with this side, and I add this side with this side, right? I get all of this equals all of that. Look at this. This is a negative tension. This is a positive tension. And these two tensions are the same. So therefore, this side of the equation simplifies into weight 1 minus weight 2. And this side, if I factor out the A, simplifies to mass 1 plus mass 2 times A. Look at this. This is the exact same equation we made up on the previous slide, where we said, hey, look, weight 1 minus weight 2. It's really a battle between this force and that force, right? And so it's, it's really the total force on the whole system is really just this minus that. We just jump straight to that. This is really the true way to get there, but showing all the work and all the tedious steps. Uh, and then look, this is just the total mass of the system times the total acceleration. Same exact thing, but showing all the work in between. And it does make a little bit more sense, I find, personally, because I'm using what I currently know, which is looking at one object at a time. And then I just go and plug in my numbers and I get the same answer as I got before. Now let's go and actually find the tension. Again, we can solve for the acceleration by looking at the whole system together to solve for just the tension in between. We don't want to look at the system, right? We've got to look at an individual object. I could look at one or the other. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to uh, solve the green one first, right? Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, but just for mass one. And I make my equation just like we did before. And I now know acceleration, so I can plug everything and just do some algebra and solve for tension. I got 21.31. Similarly, I can do the same with uh, the mass two, right? Plug in the values, uh, set up my equation, um, plug in all the things. And now that I know acceleration, I can solve for tension. Either way, I will get the same answer. Well, that's it. I hope that you have learned how to solve problems with uh, two objects. Just keep in mind the steps.